So now, let's go into the lesson. What's going on in the earth today? We see what's going on over there in the Middle East. And by the way, remember when people were all up in arms and talking about, oh, Egypt and what's going on over in Egypt and people, are, and they, they, they stirred everyone up in a frenzy? Why, e somebody tell me, why Egypt is not in the news right now? It, it was the end of the world at one time, at one point for Egypt. Everybody was talking about Egypt. You know, I think there's people even making, making videos out there talking about, yeah, he got them people to go over to Egypt. I ain't get nobody to go no. I ain't make nobody go nowhere. That's number one. Okay? People are grown folk. They do what they want to do. All right? Number two, yeah, these people are going to get killed and destroyed over there. Oh, it's, it's total mayhem. What happened? Why no one is talking about Egypt right now? Where you at? Why no one's talking about Egypt? Why the news is not talking about Egypt no more? Have anything changed in Egypt? What changed? The people are still poor. After the so-called revolution, their stock market almost crashed, and their, their dollar or their pound is worth less now. All, a lot of their institutions that used to be able to go to were burned down during that period, so their life is not better. So what changed? Huh? You know what changed? What changed was it, it wasn't about the people from the beginning. What changed is they got Mubarak out. That was the point. Mubarak was their roadblock between war and non-war with Iran. That's it. And the controlling of the Sioux Canal. This had nothing to do with revolution, revolutions of a people. See, y'all, we have to understand what's going on here. The Western world is playing off of the natural attributes of the Arabs. The Lord tell you that Ishmael shall be a wild man. If you ever live around these people and understand these people and walk around them, they are the most overdramatic people on the earth. And it's natural for them, but you, you might think that they're about to lose their minds. But they're just, you know, this is their natural attribute. They're just wild. It's nothing to get 10, 15, 20 people and pay them 20 pounds a piece to run down the street and scream out of their minds for nothing. And they'll do it. Okay? It's nothing for these people to come up to you. Now, it's not normal. Somebody coming all up on you, like, hold up, brother, I don't know you. It's nothing for them to come in your space and just be right next to you and be like, hey, what's going on? What's your, what's your name? This is how they operate. So the Western world, it, it looks crazy to us how they stage things. But it's nothing to go in the Middle East and go into Egypt and go to certain parts and see 20, 30 Egyptians just running down the street, just hollering for no reason and screaming, but they're having fun. You'll think it's a riot until you get adjusted to understand, okay, let me tell you, man, it looks like a revolution after they win a soccer game. After they win a football game, it looks like a revolution. So when it was happening, I'm telling people, listen, man, the people are fine. I'm talking to the people in Egypt. They're fine. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? The people saying, listen, I'm not leaving because if I leave, I might not be able to get back into Egypt. I want to put that out there. Um, and then they say, listen, th th you know, I just want to put this out there because we, we have some brothers and sisters over there. Um, during the time when all the ruckus, they were putting it out there in the media, and they said, well, listen, America got planes waiting to evacuate Americans. As if Americans were dying, like pe people were not dying at all. Military wasn't killing anyone. It was absolutely nothing, right? But all those that was panicking based on the Western world news was rushing out to get to the airport. And who have cameras waiting at the airport? BBC, yes. the Western News, and then they purposely held up the plane so that the the airports can look packed with all these people as if there's some traumatic thing going on, right? And no soon as Mubarak steps down, okay, there's no more meeting. Nothing changed. The Egyptians' life didn't change nothing, right? And then, listen, listen, after Tunisia, then Egypt, then all of a sudden, let's point to Libya. Let's point to Libya now. Come to find out these revolutionists are not even citizens of this country. It's a group of factions 
of so-called Al-Qaeda, which was set up by the CIA, the British intelligence, and American intelligence, that hire Arabs to go into different areas and bust them out of different areas into another country and have the same people standing on top of tanks taking pictures, when these people are not even the, the real revolutionists. It's photo op from one country to the next to make you think that these people are trying to stand for freedom against their tyrannical, their tyrannical president, right? But really, we're going to give a Bible understanding of what's going on right now. This is what we call the beginning of the battle of Armageddon. And I'm going to tell you, the Western world, the Western world, will accomplish the majority of things they set out to do. It's going to happen. But at the end of the day, it's going to push God's people. It's going to push God's people into a corner. And we're going to call on our God. And we're going to, the, the small faction that's left in this earth will fight together. We'll be forced to come together under that. All right? Because they're aiming this thing towards destroying us. Y'all looking at the Middle East. Y'all don't realize that a, a lot of these people in the Middle East, it's our people who are scattered throughout different places when we left Israel. They're still aimed towards destroying us. Farrakhan said something very important when he mentioned that in his personal conversation with Gaddafi, told him that the black man will lead this at the very end. Gaddafi said, and Gaddafi know that, and if you look at Gaddafi, he looked no different than, than, than a so-called Puerto Rican, okay? A lot of our people are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Another thing he brought up that I wanted to relate to y'all that, that, was, that was quite interesting is that Mubarak was looking to use the oil to benefit Africa and his people and started an African alliance against the New World. Yeah. He was looking to nationalize the oil so the oil could benefit his people. So that would take away from the, Euro the European oil that's coming over here to Europe. That's why France wanted to attack them and NATO got together to attack them because he was trying to empower the African countries. The Western world is looking to empower tyrants and set up coups and civil wars in Africa so that they could take the resources out of Africa. Well, it's the same thing that they did. Before. Same thing, it's divide and conquer. Talking about they dare to try to take out this tyrant and this dictator. Hold up, you know, and, it, that, and Farrakhan said, he says, listen, when is it that America didn't like dictators? When is it that the Western world, the Western world loved dictators? They set up their own dictators for their special interests. So I'm putting this out there. Do not believe anything you see on BBC or anything you see on the news concerning these wars. If you want to know what's going on, let's, you can go into this Bible. Let it tell you exactly how these wars are going to end. The Western world will accomplish the majority of things they want to accomplish. But at the end of the day, when they finally pull Iran into this war, because they... I'm telling you now. I've been saying this for about seven years on end. Listen, all these little things, don't even worry about that. Not Life will be normal up until they deal with Iran. <laughs> a lot of things is going to happen. But keep your eye on, let me tell you, a lot of you don't understand, and I've said before, how, how deep and how powerful Iran is on this earth. I'm telling you, and Iran do not have an army spread throughout the four corners of the earth, okay, all over the place, fragmented and separated. Iran's military is easily five million strong waiting, waiting, five million strong in total defense of their country. And that's not even counting the outside powers and connections they have throughout the earth. So I'm going to show you, according to the Bible, what's going to happen. These little revolutions, they are setting up, this is, this is nothing. This is just about control of petrol, control of oil. This is what this is. All right? 
It have nothing to do with uh, 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 releasing people and giving people democracy and giving people freedom. When do the West? When have the Western world ever cared about you having freedom and liberty? You think they care about Arabs? How can you say that I'm down and I want to free the Libyans and I want to free the people of the Arab world and you just killed like two, three million Iraqis? Okay, so you're not for Arabs, okay? And you continue to kill people in Afghanistan, but you, you want to liberate the people in Libya. And then you have Israel, who's just slaughtering and killing all these Arabs in Gaza, but no one is trying to take them out of position to do what they're doing in Gaza. It's about the oil, man. Libya have the, the finest and the most oil on the African continent. The petrol, that's what it's about, the oil. And in, and in Iraq, it's all American con con contractors that do the oil, no Halliburton. Act absolutely, that's what it is. So it has nothing to do with it, but it's going to turn on their head. Why? It's going to turn on their head because something is coming out of the sky, and I mentioned that before. And they got you thinking it's planet X or planet Nubiru or a sun coming close to our atmosphere, but they know that it was prophesied that Yeshua is coming as a thief in the night. And if he don't come, none of us would be saved. No flesh would be saved if Christ don't return to this earth and set us up. Okay, because there's no physical weapon we, use, we, we have in this earth that can fight the new world order. It's spiritual. It's first us taking our spirit from their gods. See, the first stage in warfare is spiritual. The Most High did this to us, like I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, because we went against his commandments. We started following the other gods. So when we empower their gods, we empower them to rule over us. So we need to take our prayers and our spirit from the elite and from the people who are controlling this earth. We need to leave all these churches. We need to leave all these mosques. We need to leave all these institutions out here all together. Even though we may not be able to come together, we can leave these institutions and start praying to the correct father together. That's the first thing we need to do. Because only, it's, it's, we're going to be saved from the spiritual realm. It's the spiritual realm that's going to make itself present. There's nothing in this earth that's going to save us. You're not going to save me, and I'm not going to save you. All right? When we come together, there's a spirit. It, uh, Christ says, where two or more gathered, he's in the midst. So we have to come together and have our father fight for us the way he did in old time. Shalom. Let's go to Joel, the third chapter. Joel 3. And don't forget, a few weeks ago we went into a lesson that says, that said, be like pilgrims in the earth. Be like pilgrims in the earth. Who understood when we mentioned a few weeks ago to be like pilgrims in the earth? Who understood what that meant? Huh? Say it again. Be ready to make any place you go your temporary home. Okay? Don't think because you was born in any particular place in this earth. Don't think that's home. All right? Don't, th don't think in your mind, well, what about my things? <laughs> like, you know, how, how am I going to be able to sustain? Because you, you, you're so-called home now, and you're barely sustaining now. It's only by the grace of the Most High that we are sustaining now, and we are so-called home. But what about my things? What about, what am I going to do? What the Lord say about that? I'm going to show you. Be prepared, because don't forget, these cats that are over this New World Order, I mean, they're setting everything up, man. They're setting every. I mean, they come to find out. I, I used to wonder, man, why phones are so cheap now, these cell phones? I was looking into that earlier. Cell phones are cheap. And I remember back in the day when they had these beepers, the pagers right next to you. They called beepers where we grew up as the pagers. And they was $100, $150. So I'm wondering you still how. Have to call back. You still have to call back. <laughs> I'm like, how can they make such technology and charge so little? Everybody on earth almost have a cell phone. Yeah. And here it is with the cell phones. 
they can read your text. As long as the battery in, it's a speaker. They can hear every conversation. Same thing with your computers here. Even when your computer is turned off, they can turn the speaker on and listen to it. If you got a, And they can turn the camera on at any time. I'm like, why are they trying to surveil people? What's up, what's up with this? What is the end result of them surveilling people? We know it's not about terrorism. Because the only people that are executing terrorism in this earth is government. The London Seven was all government, a government planned uh, 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 operation, which was really a mock operation. These kids that were hired for the the uh, the Roman Seven that, that end up doing that so-called, they didn't do anything, but they were actually hired as actors for a particular mock terrorist drill. Come to find out that it wasn't mock. The government had something blow up on purpose and had them out there so that they can be the culprits uh, that they can accuse for the terrorist act. Same thing with 911. The same thing with Oklahoma bombing. Every so-called thing that's taking away your freedom and your liberty was done by government. So it's not because they feared that some terrorism is, is going to happen. 9-11 was the NORAD, it was called the yeah, NORAD. Yeah, yeah, NORAD stood down. NORAD was doing the at same the drills at the same, at the same time that the, that, that the towers were hit. So they're not surveilling you based on terrorism. The question is, why are they surveilling so many people? Why is it that there's more surveillance in the urban and ghetto neighborhoods than it is in the suburbs? Let me tell you, you go in, in, into, into the Leeds area, and Leeds, there's cameras, they, they, man, they got cameras every place in Leeds, every place in Leeds. You go into London, every place. So what are they looking for? And now, if you're going to talk about terrorists, ain't no, hey, listen, we ain't blowing up nothing, okay? There's not one terroristic act to record that wasn't coaxed or helped. Through government or sp or state-sponsored federal help, not one particular terrorist act that you've seen on TV in the United States or here that wasn't through government, not one. Uh, like for instance, uh, the uh, the so-called uh, Unabomber, the guy that was so-called lighting his shoes up on a uh, on on a plane. Supposed to be coming from London. You notice it's London in America, England in America. Right? He was escorted on by federal agents. The so called Christmas bomber, who looked delusional as if, as if he were drugged, he was escorted on by federal agents. The so called bomber in Denver, Colorado, who was supposed to blow up a Christmas tree and dial in and blow up a Christmas tree, he was set up and paid to call on a cell phone. Now, if I'm tight on money and you ask me to make a phone call on a cell phone and you're going to pay me a couple of thousand dollars, who not, who, are you going to make that phone call? He didn't know that he was tied into a ring, that they were set up rigged with a bomb. The government rigged a bomb and say, well, it was his fault because he's the one, he, he made the phone call. What happened? They go into these neighborhoods, these neighborhoods and go into these uh, uh, mental mental institutes and to these jails and they recruit people and tell them listen we need you to help us with anti-terrorism it's not real we just need you to play these separate parts so that we'll know how to react in, in, in a terrorist scenario and they think that they're doing a service to their government this is how they do it but really there's no independent bomber or terrorist nowhere on this earth amongst us. It's them. And it's, a, it's an excuse to put a camera in your face, to watch everything you're doing. you okay to, to, to make you feel like a criminal just by walking. It's a shame because you go to one of these airports, you feel that you did something wrong. Automatically, you feel like a criminal. They got you taking off your shoes. And do, listen, man. <coughs> hey, what you got there? <laughs> oh, you can't bring this on. And no sooner you get on the other side, you got nothing but water and everything <laughs> that you can get. Oh yeah, this look toxic right here. 
What you got here? You looking suspicious. You got water. We're not the terrorists, brother. So the question is, why are they surveilling us? Why? We want to bring all this in. I don't want because I, I want to open up a portion. So let me let me bring this out. Let's go to Joel the third chapter. We're going to show you what's going on on the earth as far as Armageddon is concerned. The battle, uh, the impending battle. Joel three. Joel, chapter three, verse one. Go ahead. For behold. In the days and at that time, excuse me, in those days and at that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. What do it mean, bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem? What does that mean? To begin to awaken the people. Don't forget, part of our captivity was losing our identity. At that same time, when I begin to bring again the captivity of my people, so I'm going to put a spirit in the earth to start waking, wakening these people up. While these people are awakening and coming back to me, what will happen? Read. Verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Now, he will gather all nations and bring them to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Now when it says gather all nations, the Valley of Decision or the Valley of Jehoshaphat geographically is the Middle East. So that tells you it's the most high behind them going into the Middle East. The NATO and the, the EU and all these different countries bringing their armies into the Middle East. So this is connected to us waking up. The same time that the Most High began to wake up his people, he's going to bring all these different armies to the valley of decision. That's what Jehoshaphat is, which is the Middle East. I'm going to show you. Read. Verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people. So now he's bringing them there to judge them because of what they did to us. They think they're there for oil. They think they're there because the dollar bubble is about to burst. A lot of them think they're there to fight for freedom and bring liberty to the Libyans and bring liberty to the Middle East. But the Most High got them there for judgment. Why? Because the only thing have us enslaved is fear. So another part of the Most High taking away our captivity is destroying the armies of the nations who have us in fear. If they have no army, we're free. <laughs> So America, which is really Rome, the watchdog of the earth, have spread their military all over the earth. They, they're showing strength by having their military all over the earth. But to the wise warrior, that's a point of weakness. Because how can you fight the, the, the last battle with your military spread everywhere? So they're there in the body of Jehoshaphat for a judgment. They think they're there to bring forth the New World Order. But there will be a New World Order. But they, they're not bringing it. Because you cannot rule without an army. Let me show you. Read. And for my heritage, Israel. And for who? And for my heritage, Israel. And for who? And for my heritage, Israel. They're there to be judged to release us. The Most High is going to deal with them for what they did to us. That's why their army's there. And so we're telling brothers and sisters all over this earth, do not join the military. You do not want to be a part of this war. Step away from the valley of Jehoshaphat. Go AWOL. Leave the military as soon as possible. Because you're going there to be judged. And see, the churches are not telling these people that. You got the churches praying, yeah, he's going to serve his country. And they got him on the news and saying, I thank God that I'm going to, to fight for liberty. You're going there to die. <laughs> These armies are not going to make it out of the body of Jehoshaphat. Okay? Eventually, there will be a judgment. Uh, and again, brothers and sisters, I tell you, they've been sleeping on Iran. And I'm not going to say they've been sleeping on Iran. We've been sleeping on Iran. Because if they could have taken Iran already, they would have. They go into all these different places. Let me tell you, they will not take Iran. 
When they go into Iran, that will be the beginning of the end of their plan. Okay? And it tells you, when Iran start getting loose, I'm a, listen, nothing, nothing will be safe. Nothing will be safe. And I'm talking about, that's including us. This is going to be a judgment on us when Iran get cut loose too. I'm talking about those that are not under the most high. Read. Whom they have scattered among the nations. Whom they have scattered amongst the nations. So all these countries that are down there are complicit. They are responsible for our captivity. They all had a hand into in, in enslaving us. And all these nations became rich because we fell. We became their resources. We became the resource in which all societies thrive and become rich off of. It's us. Read. And parted my land. And they parted. No soon as we left Israel, they started taking our land, expensive land too, and parting it amongst themselves. Okay, y'all take this piece. You can have this piece near the water. They started auctioning off our chosen land. Right? Read. Verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people. And they have cast lots for my people. That means they came together, these government officials and powers, and say, listen, we'll take Judah. You go take Benjamin over here to the West Indies. And we'll, you know, the French say, you know what, we're going to take uh, Levi. We're going to take the Haitians over there in the Isle of Haiti. They started agreeing who would take God's people and who would rule us in different areas. They was cast in lots to see who would rule us. England say, well, you know, we want to take those, we're going to take those Negroes, the Jews. We want to take the Jews. The first slave ship was called the SS de Judah. So tell me they didn't know that Judah was on those slave ships. They started casting lots. Well, we're going to take Benjamin. We're going to take Levi. The Spanish say, well, listen, we're going to go over there into South America to conquist the doors, and we're going to take the Puerto Ricans. We're going to take Ephraim. Then the Asians and the Japanese say, listen, we're going to go over to South Pacific and we're going to take the Hawaiians and the Fiji Islands. Now look at the judgment Japan went under. <laughs> this judgment is to free us. Eventually. Read. Verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people. So they started casting lots for God's people. They started trading don't forget the stock market was built off of us. There was no such thing as a stock market until they started liberating the slaves in America. So they switched the plantations into corporations. Now they can hide behind brands, but they're the same slave masters. They can take the money they have made from 200 years, 100 years of slave labor and parlay it into corporations and all these different trading businesses all over the world. Now they can start, they can take that money they, they made off of our backs and make products. So everything you see in the earth today started from slave labor. And not once did they go back to the people in which they got their first capital from and say, listen, this stock market would be nothing without you. Here's something for your family. We want to make sure y'all families are okay. Because the whole earth is running off of you. We're the battery that makes the earth run. That's us, all right? Farrakhan did get one thing right when he says the only thing that'll work is if we have an opportunity to govern ourselves without outside influence because how can we trust the people who've enslaved us to, get, to, to, to give us any legislation that would benefit us, okay? Read. And have given a boy for a harlot. Then they started taking little boys and turning little boys into little homosexuals to sell to their gay plantation owners. See, the Most High have this in record of why he's going to judge these people. There's a movie called, uh, what is it called? Uncle Tom's Cabin? Good, goodbye, goodbye, Uncle Tom. Someone gave me the DVD. Goodbye, Uncle Tom. You need to see this slave movie. How they have these little boys, six and seven years old, and they're separated from their families and put into this cage. And this homosexual is turning all these little kids homosexual so that the plantation own owners who are so-called gay can pick out little African and Israelite boys to deal with. And they did this during the slave trade. 
The Most High never forgot this. Now, some people say, well, how can, why are we going into this? Why can't we just talk about the love of Jesus? <laughs> it's in your Bible, folks. Christ is the volume of the book. You have to talk about everything in the book, not just Christ's walk. The judgment that Christ is bringing is based on what happened in the earth. So this is talking about Christ. He's going to judge based on what they did. Right? Read on. And sold a girl for wine. And they started selling women for wine. What women? Our women. For nothing. For wine. Read. That they might drink. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? And he says, what, you people over there in Israel, what do you have to do with me? Tyre and Zidon is Israel. So he's telling those Jewish people over there, why are you in my people's homeland? Read. And all the coast of Palestine, will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me, swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense upon your own head. Go ahead. Because ye have taken my silver and my gold. They did what? Because ye have taken my silver and my gold. These people went into Solomon's temple, into all our different places of worship, and took all that fine silver and gold that you read of, the finest gold of, of Ophar. They took all of our gold out of our land. And guess what? That's the gold that they have in Fort Knox. They had in Fort Knox. And the gold they've been trading on the open market within the earth. It's our gold. Fine bullion. Belongs to us. It was our gold. So when you take the people, you take booty. That means you take the riches that came with these people. We wasn't just God's people. We had all the riches of the earth. So they benefited big time from our fall. You think they want to see these same people rise and understand who they are? Because with these people taking a name, they also claim the promises of Abraham and all the riches that were in our possession before slavery. Okay? Finish reading. Because you have taken my silver and my gold, and have carried into your temples my goodly, pleasant things. Go ahead. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians. So our people were eventually sold unto the Grecians. That's us being sold to Europeans. That's why the Most High have them in the body of Jehoshaphat right now for the judgment, what they did to us through time. Now, some people might say, well, what's the big deal here? Why would the Most High judge these people? Because they know who we are. That's why these people understand who exactly they're doing this to. They know we're God's people. They're not telling us. But they know who we are, but they're doing it to us anyway. And they're not showing us no mercy. They won't even let us know that we're the people. Right? Read. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians, that ye might remove them far from their border. Remove them far from their border. Read. Verse 7. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them, and will return your recompense upon your own head. And I, will set, and I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabians. So that's what's, what eventually going to happen right there. Those nations, those nations will be sold. Those nations that sold us will be sold. Galatians 6 and 7 says you reap what you sow. That's the truth. So they're there for a... Serious destruction. Hold it and get Ezekiel. And let's get that battle. Stick with us here. You still holding Joel, right? Mm -hmm. Finish reading Joel. Joel, uh, chapter 3, verse 8. Go ahead. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah. Go ahead. And they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off, for the Most High have spoken it. So you want to sell us to a people far off? The Lord is going to have it where we're going to set up some people someplace and say, listen, how much you want for them? And they're going to be sold or far off. It's going to be a seven-year period in which all this will be happening. Then after the seven-year period, then the kingdom of heaven. But there will be a seven-year roundup first, a cleansing of this earth. 
I need you to go to Ezekiel, Ezekiel 38, dealing with the battle of Armageddon. Read that. Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 1. And the word of the Most High came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against God, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach, and Tobal, and, the pro and prophesy against him. Now most people in the churches today teach that this is talking about Russia. In a way they are correct, but in a way they're incorrect. Because the original Russians were not Caucasian. The original Russians were Asian. Okay? So when it talks about Gog and Magog and Tobal, it's talking about the Asians who were originally the inhabitants of Russia. These people were pushed into China. So this is talking about the Chinese people, the Japanese people, the, the Asians. This is what this is speaking of here. Read. So verse, he says, prophesy against him. Read. Verse 3. And say, thus saith the Most High Power, behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tabal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy, thy jaws, and will bring thee forth and all thy arm, army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all, all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. And all of them handling swords. So this is armies. So when you look in the Middle East, who are the only people who are not in the Middle East right now that are a part of the UN power? <laughs> China and who else? Russia. Who, are, who, who were the two that shunned NATO when they wanted to go against Libya? China. Exactly. So they're standing on the sideline. But the Most High says, listen, I'm going to put hook in your jaws and turn you back. Don't think you're going to escape your armies being in that Middle East. I'm going to cause something that will make you bring your armies down there too. What is it? when they go against Iran. Iran is Japheth. The Persians are not Middle Eastern. They are actually Japheth. They're in the tents of Shem. So what's going to happen? The Chinese are going to come to help their brother. Why? Because the majority of their energy in oil and petrol comes from Iran. <clears throat> so if America in the Western world try to stop Iran's try to go against Iran, that's going to slow up their oil supply and their petrol supply in China. So this is going to force them to come into the war. Now the most I got them all down there together. <laughs> now you see, you think that all these things are compartmentalized as, as if we're living on a separate planet. All these things are connected. The most High made a pretext for them to be in the Middle East to war against them for what they did to us. Now this gives me a, a, a broader spectrum or, or a greater understanding on what's happening within the earth. In the end time, how did the Most High free Israel? He freed Israel coming out of Egypt by breaking the army of Pharaoh. So he had all their armies down there together to break the last army that had power over his people. Same exact thing. Now, don't you think they need to be teaching this in church? It, it brings rational understanding of what's happening in the earth. Because they don't teach this, people in the church are not interested in foreign policy and what's happening over in the Middle East. Because they don't think that has anything to do with them. They just have to love Jesus. Okay? Finish reading. Verse 5. Persia. Ethiopia. Persia is who? Persia. Persia. I ran. Who? Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya. And who? And Libya. And who? And Libya. So they're in these scriptures. So you think these so-called revolution and things that are stirring up, it's just by chance. The scriptures give us full understanding of what's happening within the earth today. That's why we're not panicking. People talk about, oh my God, what's going on over Egypt? Oh my baby, oh listen. <laughs> Let's make this clear. And I'm going to say this. I'm talking about God's people. God's people have a better chance in the Middle East than they do in the Western world. Believe me. When they, let me tell you, when they break these people and bring forth these armies against our people in this Western world, 
is going to be little to no escape. They've been watching us, surveilling us, checking us out for the longest. They know our patterns. They know exactly where we're frequent. It's going to be nothing for them to wipe us out and get us rounded up at, at, at a drop of a dime. The one place they can't really get their bead on and put their grip on is Africa and the Middle East because there's just too many people. It's too many people. And you have those some countries over there with nuclear capability. I'm about to go into that in a moment. So you're just not going to knock a country with nuclear capability off the, off the grid. Yes? Okay, um, why do you think like China is, is trying to colonize Africa again? Well, China is really not trying to colonize Africa. What China is trying to do is get resources, understanding the resources are about to dry up, and Africa is the most fertile land with unreaped resources within the earth. The, the rest of the earth been reaped. But China trying to get a stake in it first before, the, before Europe does. So, and that's going to be the last pain on our people in Africa because they're not looking to share Africa with the people that are there. They're looking to do to them what they did to the other people around the earth. What they did to us all over the earth. So they're looking to destroy and kill those people in Africa. Okay? But, yes, that's why they have these Ivory Coast things kicking off in those certain areas now. These are all coups because they have mineral resources. Everything is drying up. You got the water that's poisoned, you got the food that's poisoned, and the only rich, fertile land that can actually help us survive at the very end is in Africa. And they know this. So they had to get Libya out of the way, which is Gaddafi, because Gaddafi was trying to build an African alliance and get the tyrants out, knowing that that will be the last ground at the very end. So China don't care about Africa. They want to reap those gardens for themselves so that they can feed the Chinese. But the most I got something for them too. Japan didn't escape, you understand. China is not going to escape what's about to happen to them. But I'm going to tell you who's going to get it worse than all countries. America. America will get their America's punishment is the punishment we read of in Revelation 18. It tell you the smoke going to come up from her and the Most High is going to smell it as a sweet savor. It's like us smelling a, a nice T-bone steak fried well done. And it's like, oh my, it smells so good. The Most High is going to breathe it in. It's going to be a sigh of relief when the smoke is coming off of us from the Most High. Okay? And I'm, when you read the judgment of these other countries, and we can read it, it lets you know a third of Asia is going to be saved. None of Europe. Europe is going to be underwater, but that's when Christ returns. But America is going to be broken down slowly. And then... He's going to hit them with the bombs in every direction. And nothing is going to tell you, they tell you in the scriptures, every missile that's aimed towards America will hit. The Most High will aim them. He will make sure everyone hit. So when they go against Iran, who's, who's, who, who's Iran in league with? Venezuela. You got China. You got Russia. You got Cuba. Oh, don't forget, Cuba is right next to America, and it's like America got nukes right here, and Cuba got nukes right here. So when this happens, it's not just Iran, it's all the countries in league with Iran that's going to knock out the central base. North Korea as well. North Korea as well. So it's too many nukes to hit that, to, to knock that. So what happens, it tell you in the Apocrypha that, that first you'll see the clouds in the Middle East, and then the clouds, or the star, will come from the Middle East to go out and make Babylon desolate. So we're seeing the clouds now. A, a ruckus coming up over this area, a fight, you see a cloud, clouds coming over this area, so you're going to see missiles being shot in the Middle East, but then Babylon will make a thought to go against Iran. And there's a reason, I'm going to tell you, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, you can tell he's totally confident with this. He's not nervous. 
He's the coolest diplomat on earth right now. He's like, this is no problem. <laughs> Let's look into the Holocaust. Okay? He's like, I'm not worried about Israel. Israel, come on, man. They're smaller than all of, all of, Arab, all, all of Arabia. You think I'm worried about Israel? Let me tell you, I'm going to show you what happens when they get the gall, and they have to go against Iran. Finish reading in Ezekiel 38. Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 5. Read it. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togamah, and the north quarters, and all his bands, and, of, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou guard unto them. After many days thou shalt be visited. In the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm, Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands, and many people with thee. Thus saith the Most High Power, it shall, come to, it shall also come to pass, that at that same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought, and thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages, I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. That's us. That's us. What's going to happen? The nations that are fighting each other are going to realize the reason they're fighting is to tear each other down so that we can rule. So they're going to know, some spirit going to let them know that we are in a certain area being protected by the Most High. They're going to think this in their mind. Well, let's go take them out, these people who are being protected by the Most High. We're going to be gathered into the same area we was in when we came out of Egypt. And they know this. They're going to say, listen, let's go and try to take them out. Read. Verse 12. To take a spoil and to take a prey, to turn thy hand upon the desolate places that are, that are now inhabited. Go ahead. And upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods, that dwell in the midst of the land, Sheba and Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof, shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? Have you come to take a spoil, Reed? Has thou gathered thy company to take a, a prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods? Do you think you're going to spoil us again, Reed? To take a great spoil? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto God, Thus saith the Most High Power, and that day when my people of Israel dwelleth safely, shalt thou not know it? And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me. When I shall be sanctified in thee, O God, before their eyes, thus saith the Most High Power, art thou he of whom I have spoken in old time by my servants, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years, that I would bring thee against them? And it shall come to pass at that time when God shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Most High Power, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy and in my fire excuse me, in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all the creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. Go ahead. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith the Most High Power. Every man's sword shall be against his brother. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. And I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him. 
and overflowing rain, and great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. That's the judgment of the nations. There's more. Let's go to Ezekiel 39. Let's start at the 8th verse. Read. Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 8. Behold, it is come, and it is done, saith the Most High Power. This is the day whereof I have spoken. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth, and shall set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows, and the handstaves, and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years. He shall burn them with fire seven years, but before that there will be a great feast of all these people who are in the army. This great feast is them actually being food for the birds. I want you to hold that and I'm going to read that. The second verse, it says, And I will turn thee back and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts and bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. And I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand, and will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and the people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort, and the beasts of the field to be devoured. So their armies are in the Middle East to be food for the birds and the beasts. That's the future of these armies. So if you have any family that are joining these armies, let them know they're being prepared for a feast to get out of these armies. And it tell you here, after the armies are destroyed, then we will be empowered to go throughout the earth for seven years, rounding up all their weapons. For seven years, God's people are going to be in this earth taking the weapons from these nations. Why? You can't have a peaceful kingdom with weapons, with nations and other people running around with guns, missiles, and all those things. So the Most High is going to have a seven-year cleansing of taking the weapons from the people. Go back to where you were. Verse 10. Get your pocket real quick. Mm -hmm. So that they shall take no wood out of the field. Go ahead. Neither cut down any out of the forest, for they shall burn the weapons with fire, and they shall spoil those that spoiled them. And the Bible says, we shall spoil the nations that spoiled us. Read. And rob those that robbed them. And we will rob those who robbed us. That's the future. That's the future. Read. Saith the Most High Power. Saith who? Saith the Most High Power. Go ahead. Verse 11. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will give unto God a place there of graves in Israel, the valley of passengers on the east of the sea. And it shall stop the noses of the passengers. And there, sh and there shall they bury God and all his multitude. And they shall call it the valley of Hamengog. They shall call it the, the valley of Hamengog. Go ahead. And seven months shall the house of Israel be burying of them. So there will be so many dead, it will take seven months to bury all the armies in the Middle East. It's going to be a seven-month period. Read it again. And seven months shall the house of Israel be burying of them. Seven months burial. That's how, that's how many people are dead there. It takes seven months just to bury them. Now, this is before the bonding of Satan. When Christ returns, it will be a seven-year war first. And then you take seven months to bury the dead, and then the kingdom, then Satan is bound, and then you have your thousand years of rest. But it will be war when Christ returns. There will be war, and then after the war, peace. Okay, read. Verse 13. Yea, all the people of the land shall bury them. Go ahead. And it shall be to them a renown the day that I, that I shall be glorified, saith the Most High Power. And they shall sever out men of continual employment. So people will have jobs. There will be no unemployment. The nations will have jobs. What? Read. Passing through the land to bury with the passengers those that remain upon the face of the earth to cleanse it. After the end of seven months shall they search. And the passengers that pass through the, through the land, when any seeth a man's bones, then shall he set up a sign by it. So the barriers have buried in the valley of Hammond God. Go to Revelation 16 and 15. Revelations chapter 16 verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And Read. he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Read it again. 
and he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. That links to your valley of Jehoshaphat to show you he's coming as a thief. He's going to come in an hour that we think not. They're going to be fighting over there. Next thing you know, it's going to be total darkness. Then the only light coming out of the universe will be him to render judgment. And that's going to be, be, that's going to be between the time they're fighting and they find out that some of us are over there and, and try to come against us. Christ is going to save us the same way the same way the Most High saved us when Pharaoh was on one side and we had the water on the other side. And the Most High had to save us at the last minute. That's how we will be saved. But at this point that I'm talking about right here, America is already destroyed because we are about to go into destruction. Let's go to Isaiah 13. So the Lord says, watch and keep our garments. So if we're watching according to prophecy, we'll understand where we are according to prophecy. They have taken down almost every country. They just got to get Syria under their belt, which they're about to do, they're doing now. And Libya is not going to be easy because Libya is in league with Iran. Don't forget, last week, Iran sent Libya care packages and food and all. And don't think that it's just food. They, they, they're in league with them. All right. So Libya is not going to be an easy take. So it's going to take them a good minute to get through Libya. All right. But then after that, they're going to set their sights on Iran. OK, this is the piece we need to be looking at right here, because like I mentioned it before. When Iran starts, you can forget about trying to travel and all that is going to be almost done. All right. Because you're not going to be getting on planes during this time. All right. It's going to be total lockdown for, for a certain period. Then you have to add on top of that the plagues that are in the earth. And how these things will affect us outside of this war. The earthquakes, the destruction, the pestilences, all these things that are going down in the earth at the same time. Then you have a war that cannot be stopped on every level. Read Isaiah 13 and 1. Read. Isaiah chapter 13, Let me get this. verse 1. The burden of Babylon. The burden of Babylon, read. Which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see. Lift thee up the banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand, that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for my anger. Go ahead. Even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations, gathered together, the most high of hosts, mustereth the host, of the battle. The nations gathered together, the same thing we read in the in Revelations and in the book of Joel. And we know why they're in the, these nations now. We know why they're in the Middle East now. To free us. They have to fight and by the most high breaking down their armies, we will eventually be free. Read. Verse 5. They come from a far country. They come from a far country. Go ahead. From the end of heaven even the Most High and the weapons of his indignation, to destroy the whole land. How ye, for the day of the Most High is at hand. The day of the Most High is at hand, read. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all the hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the, the, the day of the Most High cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened and is going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to, sh cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. And it's said that he will make a man more precious than fine gold in that day, because the only men that will be left will be the men of the Most High. Read. Verse 13. Therefore, I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Most High of hosts. 
and in that day of his fierce anger it shall be as the chaste robe, and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people, and free and flee every one into his own land. Read that again. That last part. And it shall be as a as the chaste robe, and as the sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people and flee everyone into his own land. And you notice based on what's going on in the earth, everyone is starting to go back to their own homeland now. They're going back to their own countries now. We're in that time. We're in that time of the coming of the day of our Lord. Everyone is going to flee into their own land, but here's the problem. What happens to the people who don't know that they have a land? What happens to the people who don't know that, listen, it's time to start getting away from these places of our captivity, right? When you look at the chosen land, the chosen land is not just Israel. It's different parts of Africa, parts of North Africa, into Ethiopia, all the way into parts of Egypt. That's all the chosen land we're going to have when Christ returns, right? Finish reading. Isaiah chapter six, uh, 13, verse 15. Read. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through. And everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. The houses shall be spoiled, and their wives ravished. Behold, I will stir up the meads against them. He will stir up them. the who? Behold, I will stir up the meads against them. He will stir up the meads against them. The meads are the Iranians. Read. Which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. You cannot buy the Iranians. Okay? All the other Middle Easterns were in bed with Babylon. And now they're paying the price. Because since, he's, since America and the Western world set them up as dictators, they, had, they now have the power to take them out. Not Iran. Read. Verse 18. Their bows also shall, shall dash the young men to pieces. And they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms. And the Babylon, the glory of kingdoms. That's talking about America. Three. The beauty of the Chaldees, excellency, shall be as when the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And it's going to be just like he overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. What did he destroy Sodom and Gomorrah with? Fire. Fire. And it's the same spirit as Sodom and Gomorrah. All right? Where homosexuals have more right than regular people. So the Most High is going to rain down fire in, in the form of nuclear warheads. That's the future. Now, some people say, well, well, I need to hear about Christ. This is about Christ. Christ coming with war. The Most High is putting his spirit on the meads to execute his vengeance against the countries who've enslaved his people. Last scripture, then I'll open this up for questions. Second Ezra is out of the Apocrypha. Those who don't know about the Apocrypha, we see some new people here. The Apocrypha is 14 books that the Christian church and the Protestants decided that you people shouldn't read. 14 books that belong to you. All right? Second Ezra, and this Ezra, this Ezra in the Apocrypha is the same Ezra in the Old Testament you read of in the Bible. So in chronological order, if you want to read the book of Ezra, you read Ezra first, E-Z-R-A. And after you read the book of Ezra, then you will go into the book of Ezra. All right? Now, some people will say, for those that are very new, because if you go to your Christian church and ask them about it, they'd be like, well, that book is not spiritually inspired, and it really don't belong in the Bible. They're lying. They haven't even read the, the record. A matter of fact, when you go to the book of Esther, in your Bible, it's incomplete. The book of Esther in your Bible leaves off in chapter 10, verse 4. Chapter 10, verse 4 is the last chapter in verse of the book of Esther. But when you go into the Apocrypha, you have the rest of Esther, which picks up the chapter 10, verse 4, and then it goes to chapter 11. Then it goes to chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 15. So that means you don't have the whole book of Esther in your Bible if the rest of Esther isn't here. So if your preacher tell you that, that this is not spiritually inspired record, 
ask them where is the rest of the book of Esther? And should you know all, the, if, if, if I'm going to believe in the Bible, shouldn't I know the full book of Esther? The rest of Esther is right here. Okay? Now, all right, let's get it. Second Edwards 15, and let's start at 15. Second Edwards chapter 15, verse 15. For the sword and their destruction draw on, destruction draw nigh. And one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. And there shall be sedition among men, and evading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city, and shall not be able. Read that again. A man shall desire to go into a city, and shall not be able. We're coming into a time where a man is going to look to flee into another city, and will not be able to get in there. That's where we're going into. So now you see why these grids are put out there, where they're watching you, surveilling you, making you seem like a criminal uh, uh, at the airport. They're making it where you're not going to be able to travel. And then they got these new technologies where if your car can't go through certain tolls, they'll get you there. You try to go over a bridge, they can stop you there. Exactly. Exactly. But let's get straight to the point. Go down to the 28th verse. Verse 28. Behold. Read, read the 27th verse. Verse 27. For now are the plagues come upon the earth. The plagues will come upon the whole earth. Read. And ye shall remain in them. For the Most High shall not deliver you, because ye have sinned against him. Read it again. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth. And ye shall remain in them. For the Most High shall not deliver you because you have sinned against him. To show you that the deliverance come with following the Most High. The deliverance come with, like we was mentioning, following the commandments of the Most High God, a higher. Read. Verse 28. Behold, an horrible vision, and the appearance thereof from the east. Now here is the horrible vision that we are witnessing in this earth today. Read. Verse 29. Where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots, and the multitude of, the, uh, of them shall be carried as the wind upon the earth, that they all which hear them shall, may bear them in triple. Also the Carmanians raging, raging in wrath shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood, and with great power shall they come, and join battle with them, and shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. Talking about Syria. A portion of Assyria being destroyed based on what's going on in the Middle East now. Read. Verse 31. And then shall the dragons have the upper hand, remembering their nature. What are their nature? The nature is them being a wild man. Read. And, if now, they and how do we know these dragons are the Middle Eastern? Let's go to the book of Malachi to show you who these dragons are. The book of Malachi, right before Matthew, the precepts will break it down on who these dragons are. Malachi, the first chapter, that's the one I want. And I need you to read 1 and 3, read. Malachi, chapter 1, verse 3. And I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste, for the dragons of the wilderness. For the dragons of the wilderness, to let you know Esau will be fighting against the dragons of the wilderness. And in the scriptures, when you read here, it's going to tell you about the dragons of Arabia. Let's go back to 2nd Edris, right? Mm -hmm. Where you left off at that? Uh, verse uh, 33. 33, go ahead. Excuse me, verse uh, 32. Then, shall, then these shall be troubled and keep silence through their power, and shall flee. And from the land of the Assyrians shall the enemy besiege them, and consume of them. And, excuse me, consume some of them. You see it. 32. Mm -hmm. Read 32 on down. Go ahead. Verse 32. Then these shall be troubled and keep silence through their power, and shall flee. To show you that there will be regime changes and people fleeing from their countries, that's what you see it now in the Middle East, where the king is leaving his country. Read. Verse 33. And from the land of the Assyrians shall the enemy besiege them, and consume some of them. And in their hosts shall be fear and dread, and strife among their kings. So you got strife among the kings in the Middle East right now. Now this was written thousands of years before this is happening now. You got strife amongst the leaders in the Middle East. This is what we read in exactly the time period we're standing in right now. Read. Verse 34. Behold, 
clouds from the east and from the north unto the south, and they, show, and they are very horrible to look upon, full of wrath and storm. They shall smite up one upon another, and they shall smite down a great multitude of stars upon the earth. When it says stars of, upon the earth, mind you, back then they didn't have the technology to see a missile going from one place to the next. So what Ezra is seeing here is a future missile that looks like a star going from one city to the next city. So he's relating it to something that he could he seen back then. But it's future tense. He's seeing missiles being shot in the Middle East. That's what we see now. Read. Even their own star. Go ahead. And blood shall be from the sword unto the belly. And, and the dung of men unto the camel's hoof. That lets you know what location <coughs> this battle will be. Camels are in the Middle East. Read. Verse 37. And there shall be great fearfulness and trembling upon the earth. And they that see the wrath shall be afraid. And trembling shall come upon them. Go ahead. And then shall there come great storms from the south and from the north. Storms are insurrections or clouds from war. Read. And another part from the west. And strong winds shall arise from the east and shall open it. And the cloud which he raised up in wrath and the stars stirred in the stirred to cause fear toward the east and the west wind shall be destroyed. The great and mighty clouds shall be lifted up full of wrath. And the star that they make all the earth afraid and them that dwell therein. And they shall pour out over every high and eminent place and horrible star. They're talking about nuclear hits and bombs. Read. Verse 41. Fire and hell and flying swords. Fire and hell and flying swords. These are missiles. Middle East. Read. And many waters that all fields may be full and all rivers with the abundance of great waters. And they shall break down the cities and, and walls, mountains and hills, trees of the wood, and grass of the meadows, and, and their corn. Now that's how strong the nuclear missiles are. Read. Verse 43. And they shall go steadfastly unto Babylon. They shall go steadfastly unto where? And they shall go steadfastly unto Babylon, and make her afraid. So these wars will stop in the Middle East, and go directly into America. So that's where this is leading. Okay, so they're going to deal with Iran, and then Iran is going to grab a few of those Middle Eastern countries that's against America, along with the other countries they're in league with, and the missiles will go straight forth from Babylon to make it afraid. Read. Verse 44. They shall come to her and besiege her. The star and all wrath shall they pour out upon her, then shall the dust and smoke go up unto the heaven, and all they that be about her shall bewail her. So all those that, that worshipped America and looked at America as the greatest place on earth will cry for her. This is, and this be well and links directly to Revelations 18 and 9. Read. Verse 45. And they that remain under her shall do service unto them that have put her in fear. So then all the power for a time will shift to Asia. Why? Because Asia got the stock market that's prepared for America's stock market to fall. Read. Verse 46. And thou Asia. And then it says Asia. Now the Most High is going to point his destruction towards Asia. So we know America going to go down first. And then the Most High is going to point towards China. Because why? China made herself like unto Babylon. That's how she became great. China once had honor and dignity, but then it started dealing with the corporate structure of America and brought out America and made themselves a Times Square, and they started giving their women up to the system the way America do. It's going to tell you that, read. And thou, Asia, thou art part, that art partaker of the hope of Babylon, and art the glory of her person. It says, because you are the glory of her person, you have made yourself like unto her. Read. Verse 47. Woe be unto thee, thou wretch, because thou hast made thyself like unto her. Go ahead. And hast decked thy daughters in whoredom. And because you've decked your daughters in whoredom, now you got your daughters running around like the Americans. Remember when Chinese people used to be almost as pious as some of the Arabs? Fully dressed. You can hardly see them. They're walking behind their man and walking slow, and you can hardly see them. Now look at them. 
pink hair, blue hair, they looking, they out there now. So now the Most High is going to, first he's going to point to the middle, if he's going to point to the Middle East first, which he's doing now, the destruction going to hit America, now America is on fire, now the Most High said, I got to take out China. Because, um, because America then moved their mindset to Asia. They have moved all the things they do, their stock market and everything. China made everything after America. They patterned themselves. Their technology and everything is after America. So now he got to knock out the next, what you would call, monetary stable country that will continue America's rule. Read. And as debt thy daughters and whoredom, that they might please and glory in thy lovers which have always desired to commit whoredom with thee. Go ahead. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works and inventions. You have followed her in all thy works and thy inventions. So China haven't originated anything. Everything they make is a, is, 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 is a knockoff of America products or other people's products. Read on. Therefore saith the Most High, I will send plagues upon thee, widowhood, poverty, famine, sword, and pestilence to waste thy houses with destruction and death. And the glory of thy power shall be dried up as a flower, when the heat shall arise that is sent over thee. Thou shalt be weakened as a poor woman with, with stripes, and as one chastened, chastised with wounds, so that the mighty and lovers shall not be able to receive thee. So they're going to be plagued. So the Most High is going to send a plague on them and which other people will not be able to, you will not be able to, to actually be around them. Most are going to plague them with some type of, of disease. That's going to happen in China. So that's going to happen to them. And then last but not least, what people are going to fight against Christ himself? Like I mentioned last week, Europe is going to fight against Christ. This, the ten horns, because once that happens, all power comes back to the EU and NATO. In Europe, because re Europe is really the superpower where, in which all this wickedness comes from. Europe is the place that made America. When Christ returns, they go going underwater. All right? So what we need to do is start thinking about the Most High. And, and what we need to do coming together, and you brothers got to stand up and continue to think here while we set up in other places and become priests for the Most High. Now we have to really think about setting a place in which we'll be okay once this economy crashes, okay? Because our money will be worth nothing very soon. So if we don't have physical substance to live on with no preparation, it, it's going to be rough. So that's what we need to come together about. We need to come, come together about thinking what happens in a worst case scenario. Some people say, well, I'm going to store food in my house. What happens when somebody comes to your house with a gun and say, leave your house? Some people say, well, I'm going to store silver and gold. Well, what happens when somebody put a gun to you and say, give me your silver and your gold? What happens to that? All right? And even if you had silver and gold, you can't eat silver and gold. So if you've got a system in which there's no money because they introduced the mark of the beast, they're going to an to, they're going into an, an, an electronic, an electronic, excuse me, system here, reading this, an electronic system. So if you have an electronic system, how can you spend? You got your silver and your gold, how will you get water? That means you got to cash in your physical substance for credits on your chip. That means you must receive a mark of the beast. Now these things are going to happen based on a lot of disasters and things going on in the earth. They're not going to be able to print money. They're moving everything into an, an electronic system. So that will happen in the midst of all these things we've discussed. So if we don't prepare and get ourselves someplace near where we need to be and throw our finances together for that, then we're going to be taken. All right? We'll see you all next week. Bless you.